So today we have with us um, Michael Vincent, and Michael is the director at Casa de Abbey in uh, Tegucigalpa, Honduras. We currently are supporting that ministry in Honduras as a church community, and so we wanted to take a moment to have a conversation with Michael and him to share his heart with us about the ministry there in Honduras and Casa de Abbey, and, and just for you to get to know him uh, on, a, I think, a, a more personal level as well, and then also how that they can become involved personally. Michael, just tell us a little about yourself and your family for a moment. My wife, Karen, and myself have been married 32 years. Okay. We have two grown children in the Atlanta area and one uh, grandchild that just had its first birthday. Ah, uh, great. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And um, I grew up in the Marietta, Atlanta area. I uh, grew up at Mount Perrin Church of God in Atlanta and, okay. and um, was called to the mission field from there. I know that, like we already said, that you're in Tegucigalpa, Honduras. Right. How long have you been there and how did this kind of come about, this calling? We've been in Honduras eight years this okay. June, so, right. so almost eight years. The first two years we were on a small island about 40 miles off the coast in the Caribbean it's called Guanaja. Okay. It's pretty close to Roatan. More people have heard of Roatan. Yeah, I've been to Roatan before, yes. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, yeah. And we were evangelizing out there okay. and rescued some girls from the street and moved to Tegucigalpa six years ago. My wife and myself were doing short-term mission trips to Africa for many, many years. I think we've been seven or eight trips. Felt like God was calling us to go full-time and we just figured it would be Africa. And on our last trip there, that door just shut. We just did not feel like that's what God wanted us. And through my pastor, knew of uh, some uh, missionaries that were leaving in, right. in Guadalajara. And we just took their place, yeah. And I think that speaks a lot to a lot of people who are maybe uh, involved in short-term mission trips mm -hmm. and then they go two or three of those and they really feel a call of God on their life and so that is definitely a way for you to explore and discover God's will for your life. You said something that kind of sparked my attention and that is that you said that um, we rescued a few girls, you used the word rescued, so I think that brings us to the point of the mission of of, of Casa de Abbey and, and what you do there. So can you tell us what Casa de Abbey is really all about and what your mission and vision is and what you do? My wife and myself had spent many years working with children. Okay. Um, we had our own swim facility so we, we were discipling children on the island but we came across three young girls who um, had been trafficked there okay. and were on the street and exposed to the, the um, uh, negative environment, let's say. And okay. um, we brought them into our house and after realizing what they had been through, um, we moved to Tegucigalpa and started a home where we rescue, nurture, defend, and empower young girls who have suffered from physical and sexual abuse. I, I went to your website and read your your website. I noticed that you use the term on there that sex trafficking and sexual abuse is an epidemic. So this is something that is very common in Honduras, I see. There's a, a lot of trafficking, there's a lot of sexual abuse, especially even within the family. Okay. It's um, not prosecuted. So uh, the abusers feel empowered because they, they know they can get away with it in most cases. So how many girls do you currently have in your home? We currently have 11 girls. Okay. And you are in a rented facility because you're building a campus, correct? That is correct. This is actually our fourth rental home in a five years. Wow. <laughs> you know what it means to be boxing <laughs> things up, right? It, we do. Due to being in the inner city, due to infrastructure issues, it's just very complicated find, finding good rental homes that meet our needs. We homeschool, so we do uh, schooling there, and we've just grown and needed to, to upgrade. Landlords selling homes, we've had to move, so. Sure, and Tegucigalpa, if people don't know, and I've been there years ago, it, it is a massive city. Yes. It, it is a huge city. So God has created an opportunity for you in Casa de Abbey through really a, a miracle 
to be able to build a campus outside the city in the countryside. Is that correct? That's that is mean. correct. And uh, we bought nine acres of land. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. Um, in February of last year, we purchased that and, and um, continue to raise money to help start building it. Uh, we've raised about three hundred and thirty thousand dollars. That's great. So we're building a barn. A little home that will eventually be the transition home that when mm -hmm. girls become 18, they can have a place to go, live there, and start going to the university, etc. It, it is about an hour outside the city in a very, very safe um, farming area. How many girls will you be able to house on that campus then? Uh, 20. Now, from reading your website, also, you have on staff there with you uh, social workers, counselors, and others. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. We, we try. To, to have a family-like atmosphere. That's why we have 11 girls. We want to give them everything they need to overcome the trauma they've been through with psychologists, Christian counselor, counseling, um, devotional every day, going to church, etc. So we, all our girls are bilingual. They're getting a first-class education. We really just focus on the complete person, spirit, soul, and body. So when do you anticipate having your project completed um, on your new campus? Well, I, my hope and my prayer is by Christmas of 24. We still have a long ways to go. We're about halfway there raising the funds of what we need to complete the whole project. The whole project's about $750,000 and we've raised um, about 45% of that at this point. Okay. So we're gonna talk about at the end here in a moment then how people can help. Over the, the the years at Hope Fellowship, we have been striving to create a, this greater community and our greater culture, I say, of, of generosity. And so we want people to be involved as well, not just on a corporate level from us as a church, but personally. Can you share with us maybe a, a testimony of, of a life of a girl that you've seen God do an amazing thing in as well. Well, you know, one thing about being in the mission field is we get to see a lot of miracles. Sure, absolutely. And, and it's a blessing. But I want to share about Abby, or Abby. Um, she came to us about five years ago. She was eight years old. She's 13 now. She has severe post-traumatic stress disorder. Her mother was a gang member. Okay. Uh, her family were gang members. Um, the first two years before COVID, she lived with us. We would go visit her mother in the prisons. Just a really horrible background. A lot of abuse, seeing a lot of you know, violence, etc. She recently wrote her mother a letter and said, okay. Mom, I love you, but I have a new life now. I don't want to go back to the gangs. I don't want to go back to the street. God is working in my life. And living with you, I will end up dying at a young age yeah. and I want to stay here she loves Jesus she loves to read she's a beautiful worship singer she has a desire to be an English school teacher and she's also talking to me about doing a gap year between her high school when she finished high school and college and do something like YWAM for a year she's totally bilingual and just loves education and loves her new life and just doesn't want to go back to that gang life where she came out of. And you said her name was Abby? Abby, yes. Abby, yeah. Abby being short for Abigail, I guess, right? That's correct. And I know that's part of Casa de Abby. Tell me the meaning of Abigail again. I read it on your website. Yes, in Hebrew it means my fa the, the joy of the father. The joy of the father. Yes. Yeah, and that's really your vision for these girls. It is. Is to experience that in their life. Absolutely, yes. Coming from hurt and abuse, being trafficked, and other things like that. What an amazing transformation and how God is using your ministry there. What is your greatest need right now? You know, being in the missions and, and raising children, we have a lot of needs. Sure, sure, I understand. Um, but I really feel getting this building project, this capital campaign mm -hmm. completed and um, getting the girls on campus. You know, with trauma, being in close spaces triggers them sometimes. Right. And being able to get outside and and run and ride bikes just really brings a lot of peace in their life. The capital campaign is something we're really focusing on. And of course, prayer. We're on the front lines and we need prayer. Pray for our ministry and pray for the girls. So what we want to do is I think there's ways not only can people help to support you through that of giving 
to missions through Hope Fellowship and designating that for Casa de Abbey as well. But they can go on your website and there's a way to, to donate there, correct? That is correct. There's there's two ways to give. There's the general funds, that's what we operate on. Okay. And then there's Create the Future campaign. And on your website, it's also a, a sort of an artist rendition of your new campus as well. Sort of an oversight of that and some other uh, great photos. The, your web address is casadeabbey.org. I think that you know, as a church, sometimes that we we have you have to fight that tendency to become very inwardly focused, and you forget that God has called us to the world. So, what would you say to us? I think would be a way that we could maybe stay more informed about missions or be able to have a greater worldview of missions. That's, that's a great question and, and I'm just going to share with what I really notice about Christians in a sure. third world nation that just touches my heart. Honduras is one of the poorest countries in Latin America. Okay. One out of every five families live on less than two dollars a day. Wow. There's a lot of hopelessness. There's a lot of anger and despair. Um, you know, a lot of people from Honduras are making that journey from Honduras to the States right. to try to find a better life because it's, it's, they're desperate. But you can really tell a Christian family by their inner peace, by the joy they have. They can have nothing and they're smiling, the father's in the home. It's so evident it's an inward heart thing okay. and it's, 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 demonstrated so much when you're living with improvity situations you can just tell a Christian family because they're joyful they have hope they have love they're a unit mm -hmm. they're not the ones coming to the states or they're not the one because they have all they need right there it's the other ones that are that are uh, feel hopelessness right. feel like they don't have a chance there their, their life is just not going well so it just touches my heart when I see families walking together, don't have a car, in the rain, and then you talk with them and they just talk about Jesus. I think you can make a big impact spreading the gospel because it, you can really see when you're in those situations, the hope and peace and joy that Jesus Christ brings them. They are actually receiving something that's theirs that it just doesn't blend in with the world. It right. really stands out, if that makes sense. It does. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Christ and the gospel meets us where we are. Right. In life. That's right. And, right. and even when we don't have those tangible, worldly things in our life, so to speak, that we still have everything when we have Christ and the gospel. In life. The gospel brings peace in their lives, Amen. even in the midst of... Hard times. Hard times. Yeah. Michael, thank you so much for sharing with us today. We're so excited about being a part of Casa de Abbey, de Abbey as well. And we are excited about your new campus. Thank you. And the amazing things that God is doing in the lives of these girls and how God is using you and Karen as well. So we are praying for you as a church. Please thank know you. that. And uh, we are thankful, thankful that we are partnering with you as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.